Hey everyone, Satomo here again. Uh, today I'm bringing you a deck that started getting popularized last se last season by an, a man named Teal Red. If you guys have not seen Teal Red on Twitter or on Twitch, he's an amazing deck builder. I would recommend following him just so that you keep up to date with the decks that he's building. Uh, but this is a Lulu Ari deck. So the whole, I know Ari got nerfed, but it's still pretty good because the whole idea with this deck is that you're using the, using the Chumpers, right? The Chumpers. You can get so much value from the Chumpers by either supporting them with the Lulu, making the Chumpers be 4-4 and not allowing you to get good trades, or supporting them with the Ari, meaning, meaning that you're able to kind of target a unit that has 2 health and kill it for free because the Ari has quick attack and it sends the Chumpers back to your hand, enabling a lot of your a lot of your cards which need for you to discard stuff. Right? So Pearl Cannon, Senate Urchin, some Dragon and Get Excited all need this card targets. So if you're able to bounce by the Chumpers, over and over again with Ari, you're able to continuously get that value of the scanning the chumpers, the same chumper over and over again. Uh, this deck is kind of playing like an aggro deck, right? So it's trying to just develop your units and kind of hit fast, hit quick, uh, and then burn the opponent down once they're able to be low enough. At the same time, like I said, you're getting the value from being able to kind of remove the units because of the chumpers giving you that value. And then later on in the game, as you start running out of resources, you can start using the same in Thousand Tails to draw two cards and keep your hand always filled. Uh, and then you even have that Winfair Hatchling to be able to finish the game through like a big elusive combo if you have the Poros, if you have the Daring Poros in the field when you bring down the Hatchling. Um, really fun deck. It's, it's kind of like, again, it's kind of like an aggro deck, but also kind of like a combo deck. Where it relies on the combo from the chumpers to really enable the rest of the deck. So in terms of mulligan, you usually want to be able to keep either one boom baboon or want to be able to keep one of the chumpers. Because again, a lot of your cards need discard fodder. So keeping one of these two helps out a lot. Bonus points if you can keep the Lulu at the same time or even the Ari. So keeping one of your champions. As long as you have a way to protect Ari, right? So if you're going against something like, you know, I guess PNC that has Mystic Shots, then be careful not to summon Ari because with her two health, now she can just die to a Mystic Shot, right? Um, and then the rest of the card, like I said, it just kind of taking value from being able to discard. So send it Urchin and Dredge to, to be able to draw, etc. Um, I do like one Nopify, one Deny. So the one Deny is able to protect us against stuff like Very Nice, which is very popular. And Nopify can be pretty good against stuff like Poke Stick or like we talked about, like a Mystic Shot to try to kill the Ari. Uh, obviously, Twin Disciplines is really stapled here. And yeah, the rest of the deck is kind of straightforward. I mean, I do like two suitors. So, well, you're joining a lot because of the Senate Th Thousand Tales and because of the Sun Dredger and Senate Urchin. That is a lot of times where the suit up is going to come in at two costs. And you're able to put it on one of your Poros or even put it on Ari to make it be like a super potent attacker whenever you need to. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the games. And remember, if you enjoyed the content, please make sure to subscribe below. It helps me out a lot. And I'll see you all at the end of the video. So have a good one. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against, ooh, Action Nar. So it's a little bit weird here because we don't really have a lot of great ways to interact with the combo, right? Like we can keep Get Excited to be able to kill the Nar, but I think it's actually might not be correct. I like keeping, maybe it is correct. The problem is that the rest of our hand is really awkward right now. And this can get countered by a buff. I think I think we need to try to look for more value. Like something like this is not bad. Now we just need something like Pearl Cannon. I guess we gotta get excited back anyways. So we gotta get excited no matter what anyways. If he does ah. Let's do the flint champers here. We don't have a way to discard them. We can just summon the Lulu next turn. Yeah, we're taking a lot of damage, so now we really died to like a, the combo, right? So now if he gets the combo with the... Uh... And now here we just died to any buff, as well as... The Lulu's gonna die to like literally any buff. Because we don't have a way to protect it. Or a Pokey Stick. Or whatever he got from from colleges. So us being a sit thing is actually a huge deal. Yeah, that's a pokey stick. The good thing is that now if he has Nar, we can kill the Nar right away. Still at 20 HP, and like the, the longer the longer the game goes, the worse it is for us. Like really bad for us. 
Okay, he so he tapped out of uh, tapped out of the nar at least. My only saving grace is gonna be um, the same in thousand tails. Being at thirteen is so bad for us. What's our uh, and uh, we will need a second Abby or a Lulu. Unfortunately, it didn't get either. I think at this point we pass. If he develops the wound runner, we have to try to kill her with the twin discipline into the flame champers. I think just doing the one damage is not gonna be enough. And uh, Nar. Kinda sucks. I don't wanna have to discard. But I feel like if I don't kill this Nar now, they're just gonna be able to save it. That hurts. That hurts a lot. <laughs> they could also have brought a negation here to save this anyways. But if they do that, we can go with the Twin Discipline to the Chumpers. Yeah, there it is. And he sacrifices one mana for that. This, this also still allows him to get a Poke Stick value out of this. Oh no, that means he has a Poke Stick in his hand. Alright, so he has one Poke Stick in his hand that has a cost reduced by one. Oh, that's, that's a pretty good draw. Which I guess we could use the suit up right now. Why would I, I, I like the suit up here. I like the suit up here. Let's not take that two damage. Now this also becomes a pretty good blocker later on. I want I wanna I want him to use another spell. If he's gonna do that, I want him to use another spell here. Okay. So that's both absorbers. That's two absorbers down. We know he has a pokey stick in his hand that costs one. If he doesn't use it right now, okay he will. So I guess our Sane and Tassantos is not gonna get a lot of value. It doesn't look like he has the combos in, in his hand. We did commit a lot though, but now he kind of used a lot of his buffs, meaning that he shouldn't have. I think Sane and Tassantos is fine here. If we can even get another one, nice, nice. He also has the card up from the Squire, right? So he has a card from the Squire. He has two cards from the Squire because he used one Squire earlier. So he has two of the tiny spears or tiny shield, whichever one it is. We get the Ari now. He doesn't have Absorber, right? So I'm okay sacrificing this, this monkey guy. Yeah, that's a tiny shield. That's a tiny spear. He doesn't have Overwhelm, so we can just do this, and then next time we do the Ari. I like doing the Flame Chompers like this, and then we do the same in Thousand Tails, and draw some more. And this should be pretty good now, right? We even have the Twin, di twin Disciplines. Like, he does know that I can just do this, right? And this is lethal, because that's 12 damage plus 4. That's 16. And then we have the Nopify to be able to stop the stun. Ooh! This is going to be close. He could have another Rat of Negation. And he does? Okay. So he stuns our Ari, makes our Twin Discipline feel pretty bad. Still doesn't look like he has the value to get to us though, and we still have to get excited. So the get excited allows us to kill the Nar. Actually, Nar just dies here as well. Must be nice living off stolen coins. Hmm. I can kill this. I'm gonna make him decide. He might get baited into going for Lito. And he does. That's exactly what we're looking for. So now he loses both the Nar and this girl. 
He does still get the Pokey Stick, unfortunately, allowing him to kill the, fir the first thing in Thousand Tails. But he loses the Nar here. Yeah, he should Pokey Stick this. I guess he doesn't have to Pokey Stick right now. He can just wait until next turn. Yeah, he got punished by not doing the Pokey Stick last turn. He got really punished by not doing the Pokey Stick last turn. We even redrew the area anyways. So now he has what? Papercraft Dragon and Pokey Stick? We can just drag it with this. We can actually summon the Champers more than anything else. Yeah, but we, we can still summon the Champers like I talked about. Because as long as we're able to recall one of the Sailing Thousand Tails, we're never going to run out of value here. I guess he's making it so that we don't recall the Thousand Tails. Still think we always do it this way. Like, yeah, we're going to... He has to block, right, with Merciless Hunter. Which means he's going to lose the Merciless Hunter for free anyways. We do lose the Chumpers, but I don't think the Chumpers is that neat. I think it's more important for us to have the Sailing Thousand Tails. That's the last Absorber. That's the last Absorber, so he has no way to give this girl Overwhelm. Uh, obviously, Ari's always going to die no matter what, because she has Vulnerable, and we have a second Ari in our hand, and then we uh, we have a third Ari in our hand, even. We'll see which one of us is stronger, Every... I guess if he does it this way, it means that we have to block with the same in Thousand Tails, but if he does, if he does this, he's going to lose the Ari, right? I mean, sorry, he's going to lose the action. So he has to drag the Ari, because otherwise he loses the action. And then we can do the same thing again last next turn, where we can just replay the same in Thousand Tails because of the Ari charm. So we need to just push one point of damage, and we can do it this way. Because same thing again, we can just push the Bhagavan. Any way that we want to. Look how much value we got from the same thousand tells this game. That's what makes this get this deck so good. You can get so much value from just the same thousand tells. And that's game. Right? That's game because we can just give it the elusive. We can just give one of the elusives the Lulu buff. And that's it. Woo! That was spicy. That was three Nars that he got, but he got a little bit unlucky that he didn't get the Wound Runner. And we so we got so much better of the same in Thousand Tail. That's why he's such a good card. But yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be going against Mr. Mo, and he's playing the Demacia Bandle list. So what he's going what he's going for in this list, if you guys have not seen his list, he's just gonna go for uh, be able to give using field promotion an elusive combo to kind of kill us like that. It's a little bit unfortunate. Let's see if we can get the Ludo the Ari here. Or have like some of our removal spells. We don't get that either. Yeah, this is kind of tough. Huh. I guess we can at least do the Daring Poros here. Let's at least push this damage through. We have elusive blockers, which is the good thing against this deck, because it means that the whole scout elusive thing is not gonna work for him that well. But it's still gonna be really tough. Like if he gets his combo off, it's actually super annoying. Oh wow! The fact that he did this early tells me that he might be brick. You know? Like why do that this early if you're not? Shouldn't have. I guess he could have pokey sticks here. I guess he just wanted to be mana efficient, maybe, or see what he got. If he got the Ionia card, that's actually pretty annoying for us. He's a very aqua hand for us. He's looking for the he, yeah. He's looking for the Ionia card. He's looking for the, uh, the 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 three drop that heals. I think I'm okay passing here. 
I don't want to tap out of mana to do Twin Discipline in, turn, in case that I need to kill something. So at least we can summon the Lulu next turn. And put pressure with whatever he summons. Because we can remove whatever he summons, right? Out of the field and just trade that way. Wow. Okay. And now we can do this and we can just remove the next turn. So we'll go like this, just push our damage through and just remove it while we have the chance. Because the thing having spell shield can be pretty annoying. It's the Glimmer Lantern. I guess we could have just waited for him to summon the Glimmer Lantern first. Problem is that he's almost close to dying here. Like, I think we should be able to kill him here very quickly. As long as we get some of our finish, our burn from the... Like, as long as we get some of our burn, how does he win? I think I'm actually okay getting rid of the Hatchling right here. Although the Hatchling might be important, right? This is tough. The Hatchling might be important. Because he's looking to do like an elusive scout thing, right? Sending Thousand Toss is so good though. I'm gonna do it like this. I think the hatching is actually gonna be important. A little bit crazy getting rid of that. Yeah, that's the field promotion. So if you guys haven't seen this interaction, you can get the field promotion here. Give that the elusive. We'll go ahead and buff this up and we can actually kill it with the twin disciplines because he doesn't have quick attack. And that's the trade that we were looking for. So now he loses the Glimmering Lantern and loses the Field Promotion combo. And then next time we do the same in Thousand Tails and he has no board to be able to block us. <laughs> we even get another suit up. And now we have Lulu's Wish, Whimsy, which is huge because Lulu's Whimsy is going to completely obliterate if he tries to do the strategy again, right? The bad thing is that this still has field promotion on it. So even, even after he gets killed, it still gives the field promotion and the elusive, obviously. Meaning that he can just replay this into another unit whenever he wants to. Uh, which is one of the biggest reasons why that deck is so good. So, hmm. I, I need to kill this guy. Unfortunately, I need to kill this guy because he can pull the elusive blocker away. And we cannot let that happen. We could also just suit up whenever we need to. But I like saving the suit up mana. It's going down to one, so he doesn't care at this point, right? So now at this point, if he gets uh if we get any if we get any burn, we just win, right? And there it is. So any burn means that we win, we still have elusive blockers, and that's it. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I think that, that turn will be we able to kill. His uh, Gleaming Lantern made all the difference because the Gleaming Lantern was giving him value, allowing him to reduce the fish uh, or anything else, any other Fae unit. But yeah, GG is Mo. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Nar Trundle Timeline. So this deck is actually, I, I think it's really a super annoying deck to deal with. <laughs> Just because of how much value they can get because of the freaking timelines and the Trundle Pillar. Like, you just get like a free A drop, right? Because of the Trundle Pillar. It's actually crazy. And then, if you ever think you're going to be able to win because you go Wadding Board, they're able to just do Burying Ice and just kill you that way. We have a slightly awkward hand because we have like Get Excited, but only have one discard fodder for the Portal Cannon when they get excited. Okay, we do have the Ari though. Problem is that they also run Trollshan. Okay, he got time us early anyways. They also run Trollshan and they run Freezes, right? So the Ari could get punished because we have a Twin Disciplines to back it up. Oh my goodness. Why did we get this this early? I think it's fine to do it this way. We might even commit this on the Ari. Actually, if he Freezes like the Ari. So maybe we set it up. We set this up so that we can use it on Ari, even though it costs four. 
Okay, so he's gonna commit the mystic shot here instead of taking the three. I think that's fine. That's one less mystic shot we have to not worry about with Ari. So we wanna be able to have four mana next turn, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna do the Ari right here. If he has another mystic or a thermal, I'm okay with that. Doesn't have it. We'll go ahead and commit uh like as soon as we keep four mana, we can go ahead and do the during poros all that we want. He cannot summon a blocker because obviously any blocker that he summons is just gonna get dragged by the chumpers. And again, we're just gonna keep the four mana right here. And we bounce this back to our hand, letting us replay it again with the sub dredger while also drawing us a card. So this is the value of this deck that you recall. Bye bye, Sane. A little bit unfortunate that we lose the Sane out of everything, huh? It's also very lucky that he gets something here that has more than. I think. Astrosian is too big of a punish, right? I think he has to be the Lulu now. If he has another Mystic Shard or a way to kill this, then that's okay. Uh, he just has a thermal. So now we can still get this for free by doing by committing the Mystic Shot first. So it is not a Mystic Shot that's gonna go to face, but now we know he just used to the thermal. We still get this back to our hand. Losing the Saiyan Thousand Tails is actually huge though. So the Saiyan is like one of the most important cards in this deck because it stops us from running out of resources. Which is very easy for us to do with this deck. Like it's very easy for us to run out of resources. But we, we have six burn in our hands, so we just need to do 11 points of damage, which is a little bit harder said than done. It makes it so that we can just develop as wide as we can here, which I don't mind. We got the Twin Discipline now, so we can go ahead. What we're going to do is that we're going to just sacrifice. We're going to sacrifice the Chumpers, I think. So we're going to sacrifice this and just do it like this and get him down to 8. We could also just do the Sun Dredger back, but since we have the Sun Urchin, I don't think it's needed. If he tries to freeze this, ooh, it doesn't freeze this. So now we can just win. Now we can just win through the elusives, right? We have 6 points of damage here. We just need one more. Like what, we need just one Mystic or something. Okay, Sudop gets discarded. That's not bad for me. Assuming that we don't draw anything higher than this and that's his second elude traveler so okay i think we can discard the pits i think we can just win with the elusives we can just discard the pits right here and we still have twin disciplines to counter like a counter a freeze right we have two elusives, which will each push one point of damage. He could have ice. He could have the. Uh... Ooh, so we're gonna get punished here if he has very nice. Huh. Very nice becomes really, really scary here. Because then he still has enough mana next turn to do like ice pillar into it that stairs, right? Okay, no very nice. That's pretty good for us, I think. Saving Thousand Tails is huge. The problem is that if we, if we develop the Saving Thousand Tails next turn, he could still just as easily do like very nice or even eat the stairs next turn. The Pokey Stick from the Nar is going to be really annoying to deal with. But Saiyan Thousand Tails is good though. Saiyan Thousand Tails means that at any point we can potentially try to draw into like another Mystic or our last or our last get excited. So we have the excited and two Mystics left in our deck that we could potentially draw into. I guess he could also be playing around Deny. That's probably maybe why he didn't do the very nice this time. Again, the problem here is that he'll be able to kill. Like he'll he'll be pushing a lot of damage, and he'll get the free pokey stick. 
allow him to kill the Daring Poro, right? Yeah, he didn't even push that much damage anyways. So if Pokestick kills the Poro, us developing means that we get punished by it the stairs or burying ice. Oh wait, we have to deny now. So we can just do it now, no? I like this now. Burying ice or it that stairs doesn't matter because we have to deny backup. And if he does any one of those, he's spending all his mana. We still have now we have two twins to protect against like uh Freeze, and we also have the Daring Portals now being able to hit. Fortunately, we did. Fortunately, we just ended up getting. Not get not didn't get another burn. Oh wow! So he goes with this instead of okay. Which tells me he probably has like the freezes, right? But all we need to do is just what is just one of our Poros hitting. As long as one of our Poros hits, the rest is fine, right? And we can guarantee that this happens by doing this. We have double twin to protect against freezes. This is four damage here. What is it thinking? In fact, if he freezes one of the poros, he's better off for us that way. It's just gonna stun. I guess stun stuns prevents the poro from hitting, huh? He still dies to double get excited. If we commit the twin right here. Or he could have a heal. Could they have a heal? They don't play Tavern Keeper. But if we commit this and he has like a way to free, I think we need, we need to just do it like this. So the Nar stun is a little bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world. And we just try to kill him with double get excited next time. Because if we committed the Twin Discipline there, and he had like, let's say, uh, Entomb. Okay, so the Deny goes. That's unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. He was trying to burn our, he was trying to burn our, our, um, our burn at this point, right? And that's his third aloof, so he shouldn't have any more aloofs. Yeah, that's his third that's his third one so I don't think it's gonna matter uh we could even we could even nullify this because he's trying to uh, do lethal next turn she's paired like he has it right I don't think there's any way that we like does it matter if we nullify this or not I guess we should just in case that he has like a heal that he could draw into it's one less draw that he has to that we have to worry about It's one less draw that we have to worry about and you know not letting him get a random draw that could change the game. We did a point of damage though, so now we just need to actually get excited. The only the only heal that he could have would have been Talent Tavern Keeper. And the fact that he's not playing Talent Tavern Keeper right now means he doesn't have it. We can even block the rest of this damage if we needed to. Keeping Lulu is better. Just in case we get another portal cannon, we can buff up to four. Okay, there we go. Ooh, that was close. That was close. So. That top, that deny top deck was huge because he allowed us to uh, play around very nice, right? And it does stairs. It allowed us to develop without feeling like we were gonna lose there. But yeah, GG's.
So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Battle Isle Shurima Champion Plus. So this is what I... Huh. I'm trying to, trying to figure out what this deck is, actually. I'm having kind of like a hard time right now figuring that out. We need Ari or Lulu. We have two of the pieces for the combo, now we just need the third one. Ooh, it's not great. Because we probably don't want to get the burn early enough. I'm going to just do it now. Let's get a one point of damage in. And just hope that we get something later on. We do have the same task and tells to let us draw later on as the game goes longer. I just have no idea what I'm going against. Shadow Isle Shurima Champless. Like, what is this deck? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so it's just going to be like an Undying deck, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think it's just going to be Undying. That would be my guess. Here we have Deny as well to be able to provide us with backup if we need to. And that's the Ari. Question here is, I actually don't think I want to summon Ari until I have enough mana for Deny. Not only that, but I don't want to have to kill this Curse Keeper either, right? Because I have a hunch that I'm gonna be I'm gonna need to keep the Deny mana open. I guess we can summon her right now to be mana efficient. The fact that he has three mana means that he could have some. I, I guess Black Spear is not enabled. He just stopped out of being able to do the bots. Yeah, with Twin is pretty nice now because with Twin we can get, be able to kill some stuff. One day we need to Mystic Shot this, or if it, is it okay for me to just do the. Oh, he's just gonna try to go for the kill. Okay. That makes sense. I, I, I walked right into that, right? I walked right into the caretaker. I'm sure I known that he could have the caretaker there to do something like this. Uh, no matter what here, it means that we're going to lose one of these units. Uh, we can take all this damage, which would be pretty punishing for us to do that. We can do it like this. And I think that'd be fine. With two mana, he shouldn't have any way to kill us. I think I'd rather just protect as much damage as we can. We kill both of their big units. Yeah, these units stay alive, but they are a lot less valuable than the other stuff that he could have. We still have the deny here. We need his path. Okay, so this is just kind of like a burn. Like, trying to go super face death. Which is why I was really... Which is why I really didn't want to have to take that much damage if I didn't need to. I hate... Because uh, this is not bad. Problem with Lulu here is that we don't really have a great target for Ari, right? I guess we could protect the Lulu by doing this, and then we're gonna have to uh, send the Lulu back to our hand. Technically less damage if we recall the Lulu. I think we're gonna have to do the Lulu on the Darren Poro though, right? To make the Darren Poro do a lot more damage. He only has five mana. And then next turn we can do Sane and Thousand Tails. Okay, he's just gonna try to kill us next turn then, huh? Oh, try to kill the Ari next turn, I mean. Okay, he also gets that value there. Uh, we can also just do it like this. So we will lose we will lose the Lulu. And I think that's okay, because we're pushing a lot of damage this way. And then we also force him to have to summon another unit before he can do the Caretaker. We could also just do the same in Thousand Tails. Next turn. And that would allow us to defend against the Camaborn and Dragon. Because he will give... Yeah, see, he, so he doesn't... He's going to decide to actually take the damage. Because he doesn't want to... He wants to have a unit that he can sacrifice when he does the Blighted Caretaker. Hmm... The problem with doing the Lucid Poro here, right, is that the Lucid Poro is always going to die. We push a lot more damage. I think I have him. Ah, no, let's do it now. I was going to wait for him to commit it. Oh, that's huge. So I was going to wait for him to commit it, but now that we got this, this is even better. 
Problem is that we have ideally would like to use that somewhere else. Yeah, so he's just gonna go for as much damage as he can. He's probably we do have like stuff like deny to protect us against like a atrocity, right? You have to drag this guy. He's not gonna drag this guy. So we get on to one. If he has another camera wearing soldier, we just lose. I think I can now go down to one. I think it's better to just go down to four here. So we can always recard it, recall the t the same in thousand tails back to our hand if we need to. Here we don't have to worry about atrocity just yet. Okay, that's even better because now we can actually get the chumpers and be able to clear his board with the Ari. Because we know he has some type of burn, right? He could also play. Actually, it's probably very likely that he plays. Um, the Doombies. Yeah, there we go. So then the Doombie puts us at two. So now we just lose. If he has anything else that's like important. I think we always have to kill the Doombies here. We have to keep enough mana for the Deny. Unfortunately. Because now we are two, right? Now we're at two, which puts us in a very vulnerable spot. Because now another Doom Beast kind of kills us there. And he also predicted a car here, so like any burn kind of kills us. Another Runius Path kills us. So Runius Path is a kill. He, he definitely has the burn, right? So we have to keep the deny. We have to keep the deny man, unfortunately. Okay. Don't think I care. Don't think I care about this girl. This guy's dying. I guess I kind of do, right? So that's a fearsome blocker. So we're gonna have to do the. I mean, sorry. That's a fearsome attacker. This is three. I'll do the pits. Obviously, he'll be able to just kill the pits for free, which I'm okay with. Because I think I have to trade my whole board anyways, right? And we just do this here to kill this guy. And now he still needs to find the one piece of burn. And as long as we have the deny, we should be okay. Here we do the hatchling, what, win, the windfair hatchling. Yeah, I know. So now he needs one more piece of burn. Now he needs one more piece of burn. Problem is that I don't think we win next turn, right? So I don't think we win next turn. And he could easily have the last piece of burn. Hmm. I guess dragging it like this is actually losing damage. I guess we actually need to do it like this. This pushes the most amount of damage possible. Yeah, this pushes the most amount of damage possible. Um, we have Mystic Shot to try to finish up. Probably, that's two Doombies done, right? That's two Doombies already completed. It's going to be taking 10 damage. 10 damage is not enough. Because he still lives at 4, so the Mystic Shot is not enough to kill it. At least we know he doesn't have the Runius Path available here. He has one card in his hand. And we don't know what it is. We need to look... Oh, got it. Okay, I was going to say. We need to look for the burn. So I was going to discard the Lulu spell. I mean, I was going to... Yeah, I was going to discard the Lulu spell with the Sun Dragon. And see if we could find the last piece of burn. But we ended up surviving through it. So yeah, GG's. And this match, we'll be going against Renekton Achen. So this is the same combo as like Achen Nar. Except that he's using Renekton. Uh... I kind of like this whole hand. I like having the twin disciplines as a way to protect the Lulu because obviously we're going to try to get some value from the Boom Baboon, Lulu, and some Dredger. Plus the twin. It, it gives us just enough mana to do everything. And now we even have the Senate Urchin, which is not bad. Good. And the twin discipline is also nice because he helps us defend against like an Overwhelm later on. If, even if 
we don't get any value from it right now. Ooh, having the average is even nicer. I guess we'll do it like this. You can go ahead and, and, and do your attack. You can just kill the next turn. You can just kill it because of the Ari, right? I guess what's the problem here, right? It's a lot of things that could kill that could, that Ari could die to. Like if we commit for the flame chompers play, he could just easily have a buff to kill to kill the Ari. I guess if we do that, are we okay with that? I think I might be. I think I might be okay losing Avery right here. Like if he has, so, so again, if he has a shape stone, right? He's gonna have to use it right here. And I think if that's the case, I'm gonna be okay losing her. I'm gonna force him to have it. I'm gonna force him to have the shape stone. I don't think I, I don't think I can play around it. The only problem here is that we're not attacking with anything else, right? So here, do you have it? Because if we if we spend the shape stone now, it's one less buff that he has for his combo later on. So I'm okay taking this sacrifice. We still have the Lulu anyways for next turn if we need to. And we got a secondary anyways. He's trying to do uh hmm. What are you trying to do? He wants loop he wants loopless predator, right? He wants loopless predator, so that's what we have to be careful of. Here we can still summon the Ari and do the same thing we tried to do last time. I said that Ari this time is gonna stay alive. You have the stun. Oh wait, what are we doing guys? It's supposed to be the Ari there. Why did we not attack with the Ari there? I'm gonna force him to block with these other guys. Otherwise, he's gonna go down to six. He's gonna go just gonna down to nine. He's just gonna do the. So we misplay, right? We needed the Ari this time to at least get the action for free. Because now he's going to be able to level up the palace. Big set. And then he loses her. Woo! Okay, he gave us that for free at least. Okay, so at least he gave us the he gave us the Ruin Runner for free. I think without the Ruin Runner, without him having the Overworld, we, we kind of a little bit in a better spot. Even now we're misplay. Even though we misplay by not summoning the Ari. I meant to summon the Ari instead of doing whatever it was that I did there. Um, but it just ended up not working out for us. I'm pretty sure he has a ruthless predator in his hand. So I need to be careful not to, like, overcommit my hand. So I think I like doing this first. It's kind of like a non-committal play. We can play the Lulu. Okay, just pokey stick. I actually like the Ari better because if it's if I think I, I think the Lulu is more important than the Ari at this point. So if he has the ruthless better, I want him to do it right now. He's still showing like he has it. So I guess we have no choice now. We'll have to we'll have to commit the Lulu. And then we'll just do the same in Thousand Tells. Like he's been playing like he has the ruthless predator in his hand, which I know that he runs. He actually main decks this ruthless predator. Doesn't have it, so here we can just do the same in Thousand Tails and have like a huge attack. All we need to do is just drag one of the blockers away. Just push a lot of damage that way. Guess we might as well do it like this and just get the uh, get this girl for free, huh? And we're, we're, let's let's just keep our let's keep our Lulu in the field, I guess. Okay, he's just gonna do the quicksand here. So he gets to kill the Ari. He's not gonna go after the Ari. 
All right. We lose our last champers here. We can potentially draw more because of the Saiyan Thousand Tails. Still have the Mystic Shot. We even have the suit up now to be able to buff something up. Then we just do the Saiyan Thousand Tails and call it a day. Gives us a lot of health, gives us a lot of draw. Next time we can do the Wind Pair Hatchling and just win that way. That is a paper cap dragon. Uh, he has no choice but to do that, obviously. We have another we have another Ari anyways. We have nine mana next turn. I think we can do a flame choppers here. Allows us to drag stuff out of the way. He didn't get to level up action, so it doesn't matter. Um Do I need to do I need to commit this on this guy right now? I guess we can. He becomes a really good attacker without needing to be buffed by anything. And then we can do here the Flint Chompers into the Wind Flint Hatchling and we just win the game. Okay, he levels up the action at least. But he barely has any cards in his hand, right? Barely has any cards in his hand, we can kill most things. Yeah, okay, that's easy. The moment that he gave us, so the moment that he lost was when he gave us the Ruin Runner, right? He got greedy because of the quicksand, taking our attack to zero. But he ended up blocking the thing that already had four attack originally, right? So I was able to buff it right back up with the Twin Discipline and able to win that way. But yeah, GG's. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Hope you enjoyed those games. I think this deck is really fun and it's actually pretty strong in the current meta. Um, so I would recommend, like, if you like this kind of this kind of combo with, like, Lulu Ari, I think it's really fun. It's, a, it's another way to, to kind of play aggro. So I would really recommend you try it out um, if you're looking for a new deck to try that, you know, if you haven't tried this from last season already. And again, all credits go to Teal Red, which was the original person who invented and brewed this deck. Uh, but anyways, if you like the content, please make sure to subscribe. We post LOR videos every single day. You can also catch us on Twitch, where we stream at Twitch Tournament about three to four times a week. And you can also catch us on Twitter and Discord where you can find the description for those below in the description. I'll see you all tomorrow.